but very keen in today's program uh, to, to try and unpack as much stuff as possible because all sorts of theories are uh, around on the internet and uh, people try to dismiss them as conspiracy theories and I, I always point out it's always slightly derogatory using that phrase because the truth is the truth and that's what we need to, to look at now one of the things that people often speak about is bbc reporter jane stanley and she apparently reported the collapse of building seven a full 20 minutes before it happened what do you make of that david pretty clearly it hadn't started down and there was no way she could really be reporting uh the actual event so there had to be some kind of a script that she was following so i mean there's no way around it i mean and she's not the only one there were several other reporters during the day who uh um I mean, american reporters and others as well that that basically said it is either coming down or about to come down one guy was actually looking at the building and he was saying it's either come down or about to come down because he was confused um but he was reading what he was supposed to say and he was looking at the building and they didn't match up so i just assumed jane stanley wasn't as familiar with the skyline as this uh, new yorker reporter was well, it's interesting because I, I was looking at what the BBC themselves might say about that because it's been going around for a long time. And, uh, uh, Richard Porter, who at that stage was controller of English services for the BBC's global news division, and he also oversee, uh, oversaw, rather, but he left uh, BBC World Service. What he said on the 27th of February 2007, I'll read it to you. Uh, We're not part of a conspiracy. Nobody told us what to say or do on September the 11th. We didn't get told in advance that buildings were going to fall down. We didn't receive press releases or scripts in advance of events happening. In the chaos and in the confusion of the day, I'm quite sure we said things which turned out to be untrue or inaccurate. But at the time, we based on the best information we had. We did what we always did, source our reports, use qualifying words like apparently or it's reported or we're hearing. Our reporter, Jane Stanley, was in New York on the day of the attacks. And like everyone who was there, has the events seared on her mind. I've spoken to her, and unsurprisingly, she doesn't remember minute by minute what she said or did. We no longer have the original tapes of our 9-11 coverage for reasons of cock-up, is the phrase he uses, not conspiracy. So he does say if somebody has recordings of their output, uh, they'd love to get hold of it. Uh, what, what do you make of that, Ted? Well, you, you, you also, as, as David mentioned, there's other reports, and you need, you need to look at the, the BBC report uh in, in the context of all, all the reporting and all the events that were taking place at that site throughout the day. So, so we, we basically look back at the oral histories of the firefighters and there's hundreds of them that we can read. And basically from 11 o'clock, so just a half an hour after the second tower came down, from about 11 o'clock, the, the authorities at the scene, the, the fire department, the Office of Emergency Management began warning people that building seven might come down. So about six, six and a half hours in advance of the building collapsing, they start to move uh, firefighters away. They start to move rescuers away, and they're and they're very cautious about going into Building Seven. And as the day progresses, that foreknowledge and actually from from early on, it was quite certain. There's a report from a assistant chief uh, named I want to say Phil Hayden, who uh, was says that he was told by an engineer around noon that the building you you with this fire and damage, you have only five hours left, which is bizarrely exact and, and then that that's when it ends up coming down five and a half hours later so th there's actually no way that you could predict based on some damage to one corner of the building based on some fires in the in the building that this building is going to come down with any sort of certainty and yet as the day went on officials just became more and more certain that the building was going to come down they were actually delaying their rescue operations you know they were delaying going into the site because precise like only because they were essentially waiting for building seven to come down and so throughout the day, the news media starts hearing these reports that, you know, the emergency officials are concerned about Building 7, that they, they, they think it's going to come down. Several of the news media say, with start reporting with certainty, this, that's the building that's going to go down next. Uh, this level of foreknowledge is just impossible in, when, it, when you look at a spontaneous event. And then if you fast forward to after the event, the um, engineers are, can't explain it. It took years and years for any for engineers to be able to have any sort of explanation of how this building came down um you mentioned Shyam Sunder in 2006 that Shyam Sunder the head of the National 
Institute of Standards and Technology investigation into the collapse of this building. In 2006, he said, we don't know. We're having the, having trouble getting a handle on how Building 7 com- came down. So how do you have so many officials at the scene saying it's going to come down? And then as soon as it happens, everybody in the engineering field cannot explain it. Clearly, it came down for a different reason. And the, and the engineers are not allowed to say how the building really came down. Yeah. And you mentioned a number of names. It was Professor of Civil Engineering, uh, Dr. J. Leroy Halsey. Uh, he led a research team on the collapse of World Trade Center Building 7. And his final report also contradicts uh, the U.S. government's narrative. Critically analyzing global affairs, the muckrakers on today's News Talk, TNT.